On number 17, on all four parts, you're writing an equation for each one of the lines um, that is described. And your answer needs to be in slope-intercept form, even though the directions do not tell us that. So we're lo looking at the relationship of parallel and perpendicular lines. And so remember, parallel lines will have the same slope, whereas perpendicular lines will have opposite reciprocal slopes. Remember, that's two changes. You're changing the sign, and you're flipping the fraction of the slope. So two things to change. So in letter A, if we want to write a line that's parallel to this line, we want it to have the same slope of this line. And remember, the number in front of x is my slope. So I want my slope to also be 4. And then I'm given a point that it goes through. So we're going to use what's called point slope form y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1 to write the equation. Remember the y sub 1 and the x sub 1 are where you put your point that you're given. The first number, remember, is an x coordinate, so it will go in for x sub 1, and the second number is your y coordinate, so it will go in the y sub 1 place. So don't try to replace them in order. You have to put the x in for the x and the y in for the y. And then the m, remember, you have to pay attention to whether you have parallel, which is same slope, or perpendicular, which would be opposite reciprocal. So we're going to be putting 4 in for m in this problem. So I'm going to have y minus my y coordinate of my point, which is 13. Remember that subtraction is part of the formula. Equals my slope, which is 4 times x minus my x-coordinate of my point, which is 3. If that had been a negative 3, remember when you subtract a negative, this would have turned into addition. To get it into slope-intercept form, I need y by itself, but first I need to get rid of these parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the 4. So I have y minus 13 equals 4 times x, which is simply 4x and then 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. I almost am there, but to get y by itself, I need to undo the subtracting of 13 by adding 13 to both sides. And of course, when I add it to this side, I'm going to add it to the constant. So my equation will be y equals, by itself now, the 4x, and then my y-intercept is negative 12 plus 13, which is plus 1. This is my equation. On part B, we want a line that's perpendicular to the given line, and it's giving us our y-intercept. So this is my B value in the slope-intercept form. So all I need is the slope, and I'm ready to write the equation. So remember, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. The slope of the given line is the number in front of x, which is 1 half. Since it's positive, I want my slope to be the opposite, so I want it to be negative. But I also have to flip that fraction. So 1 half becomes 2 over 1, which is just 2. So that means my slope needs to be negative 2, opposite reciprocal. So now that I know my m and my b value, I'm ready to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So y equals negative 2 goes in for m, and then the x. And then my b value is negative, so instead of writing plus a negative 2, I'll just write minus 2, which means that b is negative 2. So my slope is negative 2, and my y-intercept is negative 2. On part c, we want a line that's parallel to this line, and it's giving us the y-intercept. So once again, we know the b, but I need to know my slope. The slope is not 3 in this case. It's not the number in front of x unless your equation's in slope-intercept form. So we want to get this in slope-intercept form, which means we need to get the y by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the other terms on the same side as y. So I'm going to subtract away the 3x, and I'm going to subtract away the 8. Since I'm doing that to the left side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. Subtract the 3x and the 8. So now, on the, right, the left side of the equation, I only have 4y remaining. On the right side, I have this. Since I had a 0, I have a negative 3x and a negative 8 on the right side. 
So now to get y by itself, I just have to undo multiplication, which we use division to undo. So if I divide this side by 4, I have to divide, divide this whole side by 4 as well. So now I have y by itself. My slope is the number in front of x. It was negative 3, but I had to divide it by 4, so it's negative 3 fourths. You always want that to be reduced, but that will not reduce any. And the y-intercept would be negative 8 divided by 4, which is negative 2. Now remember, this is not my answer. I just got it into slope-intercept form so I could see my slope. My slope is the number in front of x, so it is negative 3 fourths. I want to write an equation that's parallel to it, so I also want a slope of negative 3 fourths. But remember, I want my y-intercept to be 4, not negative 2. So my equation is going to be y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 4, y-intercept of 4. So here's my answer to part C. On part D, I want a line perpendicular to this line going through the point 10, 1. So again, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. I need the slope of this equation. Remember, it's not the number in front of x unless it's in slope-intercept form, which ours is not. So we're going to begin by getting that y by itself, just like we had to do in part C. So I'm going to begin that by subtracting the 2x from both sides so I can get rid of that term on the left side. Be careful here, it's not just 5y that's left on the left side, it's negative 5y. That sign goes with that term. So now that's all that's left on the left side of my equation. On my right side I have a 15 and a negative 2x. I'm going to put the negative 2x in front, so write that as negative 2x plus 15. And then I'm ready to get y by itself. Remember, don't add 5 to both sides. You're not undoing subtraction. This is multiplication between negative 5 and y. So I'm going to divide by negative 5 to get rid of it. And I have to do the same thing to this whole side to keep it balanced. So now I have the y by itself. Remember, the number in front of x is my slope. And it's a negative 2 that's being divided by negative 5. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So that will simplify to 2 fifths x. And the y-intercept was 15 divided by negative 5, which is a negative 3. So my line, remember we were doing this to find the slope. The slope of this line is 2 fifths. To be perpendicular to it, I need the opposite reciprocal of 2 fifths. 2 fifths is positive, so my slope needs to be negative. I also need the reciprocal, so I need to flip that fraction, so now it's going to be 5 over 2 instead of 2 over 5. Now, I wasn't given the y-intercept this time, so I'm not ready to write my equation in slope-intercept form. I was given a point, so remember that's going to go in as x1 and y1 in my point-slope form. So I'm going to write this as y minus my y-coordinate, which is 1 equals my slope. Remember to use the negative 5 halves, not the 2 fifths. We're trying to be perpendicular. Times x minus my x-coordinate of 10. So again, we're going to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we still have y minus 1 on the left side. Negative 5 halves times x is negative 5 halves x. And then the negative 5 halves times negative 10. You can put that in your calculator as just negative 5 divided by 2 times negative 10. Make sure you include those signs there. But when we know a negative times a negative is going to make that positive. 2 in the denominator goes in the 10 in the numerator 5 times. And 5 times 5 is 25. So I can do that in my head as well. But if you don't feel confident with that, put that in your calculator, please. We still don't have y by itself. We need to add 1 to both sides. So now we have y equals negative 5 halves x plus 26. That's the equation of the line for um, letter D. You can check um, your answers on these two, by the way, by putting that point in for x and y and making sure it satisfies the equation correctly. So for instance, on part A, you can put the 3 in for the x and the 13 in for the y and make sure that that's a true statement. 
Well, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. And so that lets you feel really good about your equation there. You can't really do that on the ones that it just gives you the y-intercept. But on part D, I can put 10 in for the x. And that should equal the y value, which is 1. So again, 2 goes into 10 5 times. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. And negative 25 plus 26 is 1. So that lets me feel good about my equation.